the children they yearn for the mine. I don't know if you knew that, but <laughs> they yearn or the for oil it. sands. Yeah. They yearn for the mine. <laughs> yeah, well, was that a uh, hundred years ago? Kids were in the mine, and now they're obsessed with Minecraft. Children yearn for the mine. It's true. <laughs> it's true. They yearn for the mine. It's a joke, but it's also not a joke. Mm-hmm. I think what we do is very aligned with human nature, and society has just, in a lot of ways, progressed, but also regressed. Is that right? Yeah, we need, we need more children working come back. full-time jobs. That's what we need. Mm. No, I don't mean that. I, I just mean children being inside all day is not good for them. Not really. For like from so a developmental they're, standpoint, they're it's fucking inside terrible. inside pretending to be outside. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, that's, that's well, not we, good development. I don't know if you know this, Alex, but we used to be a country who made things, and now we're a country who thinks about things. Well, yeah. Yes. It's America, man. America. Yeah, but the pendulum swung in one direction. It's going to come back. It has mm-hmm. to come back because you have all of these trade positions that need to be filled. There's no way out of that. And I think that's an interesting point to consider that like the the natural draw to things like Minecraft or whatever else. Biggest toy company in the world, Lego. Lego. Roblox. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, Roblox can go fuck himself. Yeah. But yeah. no, but I, I do think there's gonna be a huge fucking shift in the United States. Well, but that's what I was saying was like within the next is that what or two. heralds this change in under ten year olds? I don't like, I don't what I don't know. I, I'm more and more convinced though that society's gonna break at some point. Like I've I've been studying it more and more and more, and I see we have this aging population that's only growing. For the first time in, in the history of our country, mm-hmm. we were going to have more old people than we have young people. Because they are not dying fast enough. Well, that... I mean, it's essentially the math of that. Not well, like more old people need to die faster. That's it's, not what it's, I'm calling for. We've, we've extended age a little bit, but not by that much. Age has, for the first time in U.S. history, actually declined. Mm. Um, which, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons for that. Because why be healthy? Just take shots. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're having less kids. Because we've mm-hmm. all urbanized and kids are a pain in the ass in a city. Yeah. But they're free labor on the on the farm. Ooh, interesting. So back in the day, you'd have a much larger family. Now you don't have nearly as big of a family or you're waiting to have Because you don't need to, to generate your own labor force on That's, the farm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you still want to procreate, but not to the extent of it's like you have two kids and you're like, fuck. Like, and it's, really? Like we really need three kids? Yeah, it's so. definitely our generation too. Because like Harrison, you... You have kids? Hello. You want kids? Uh, no, not anytime soon. Yeah. Aaron, you have kids? Uh, uh, you want kids? I'm not thinking about it. Any yeah, it's it's not even on my radar, and I'm 26. And yeah, like, I've I've thought about it. Like, if it were to happen right now, we're done having kids by 26. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. It's it's crazy, but the the society is shifting, and I don't know what's going to happen as a result. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it might get fucking messy. Uh, but that's also exciting. It's terrifying when you start to think about some of these fundamental shifts happening, Yeah. but it's exciting because it's like, whoa, we might be part of the generation that has the ability to define where the, ge- where the United States goes over the next 200 years. Yeah. Like we've done well for 200, but we're kind of riding the fucking coattails right now. And we have been for a few decades. But isn't there an argument to be made that that's every generation, like that it falls on their shoulders in some capacity to build the world? Correct, but we've never had the debt problem we have right now by the astronomical amount that we have right now. We've never had this enormous old population before like we do right now. We, we have these problems that just haven't existed before in the history of our country. We have this labor problem right now that's only beginning. Every fucking person in the country needs people. How do you solve that? I don't know. Things have to break. Yeah. Things have to break. That's the only way out. Mm-hmm. Or the government starts making people. Westworld? Joel Gerber. Um, everybody. Is conspiracy that a take theories? He has? We for him? Are we against him? I don't know. Uh, oh, I, I, I love conspiracy theories, though. What's, what's the one that, like, you're sold on? Uh, the, the monarchy killed Princess Diana. Mm. Yeah. Without Easy. a doubt. So I started learning about that. I'm like, there's no way this was an accident. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no, yeah. there's no feasible way yeah. that this just conveniently happened. Yeah, it's too coincidental. No way. Yeah. Or Jeffrey Epstein, the guy didn't kill himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no way. shot. No shot in hell no did shot. he just kill himself. Like, yeah. no, uh-uh, not buying that for a minute. Yeah. 
I've tried to stray away from like the moon landing stuff because it's like it, it's it's too real from like a photography camera perspective. Those very quickly sell itself, let alone like all the other conspiracies around the moon landing. So like that's one I try to avoid entirely. But yeah. I get I get the moon landing because it's like, fuck, like, I don't know if they've I, I don't I have no idea if we actually yeah. landed the moon. Who's who can prove that? And we're the only ones that have been there. No one else has been there. Yeah. Yeah, does it not seem enticing to go back at all? <laughs> I, it kind of does to me. I like, don't know. But. I'd be curious to hear from like uh, the Russians or whoever else has been on the, sta- the space station. Like your view from space, seeing the Earth, seeing the moon. Does the moon feel any more like attainable if you're already in space? Like, oh, yeah, people have probably been there. Or is it like that's still just so possibly far away? It's hard to wrap your brain around that. Because like from Earth, everything's far away. Right. But if you're off of the, the surface by however much. You yeah. Know, Have you it? seen the scale picture of the Earth and the moon and how far they actually are apart? It's crazy. It's insane. It's insane. I like open it, open it another tab if you're watching or listening to this and look at that image. It's mind blowing. <laughs> See, but they try to put space into perspective. And it's just so big. That makes it worse. It just yeah. makes it worse. Yeah, You're true. like, ah, fuck. Like, true. I don't know what a million, uh, 1,358,000 swimming pools looks like. Sure. Like, I just know what one swimming pool looks right. like. Mm, right. <laughs> or, or I was thinking about this morning. They're like, yeah, this truck is the size of three dinosaurs. I'm like, fuck. Like, yeah. I don't know what a, one dinosaur looks like. Thank oh. you for comparing it to something that no <laughs> one's ever seen. Or, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's the size of a blue whale. I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't see blue whales all that often. Yeah. So, so yeah. my mind is like, yeah, that's big. But I thought it was big before. It, it makes it no. Or whenever they, uh, oh, it's this, you know, Olympic size swimming pool. I'm like, I've never, I don't think okay. I've ever seen an Olympic size swimming pool. I've right. never been to the Olympics. Right. So, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Does, is it called that because the Olympics have said that's how big the pool needs to be? Or it's a pool at the Olympics? I, I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. I'm going to add yeah. that to my conspiracy theory list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On on that topic of scale and tying it back to dirt, uh, I remember. I mean, this which, is almost exclusively clip only, and right? We can do a podcast. yeah. I remember um, we it, machines look the same size from a distance, at least to me and my untrained eye. All haul trucks from far away look like a haul truck until you're up next to them, and you're like, "Oh shit, that's a triple seven. Uh, until we were in Alberta uh, last time, we were far away from a haul truck, and it had a D six in the bed of it. That a D six for scale, no, a D. A D8. A D8 in for scale. Montana. Is that what it was? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Well, we um, went, We it was driving towards us. I think it was a 793 driving towards us. And there were two little GPS antennas mm-hmm. sticking out of the back. I'm like, yeah. what the, f- why would those be in the bed of it? It doesn't make any sense. And it drove by. We were like, holy shit, there's a D8 in the back of that yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. But from far away, it looked just like a normal sized truck yeah. coming at you. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, yeah. but in, in a big mine. Mine trucks, haul trucks don't look big in mines Mm-mm. because Mm-mm. there's no sense. It's 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 a big place. Yeah, there's no bananas on mm-hmm. the ground. No, there's no anything. there's no scale. Yeah, until you walk up right next to it, you're like, holy shit, that's a big machine. I'm half the size of the diamond. But even like we were at Quincat last week, there were 352s in the yard, mm-hmm. brand new 352s. You're standing next to them. You're like, this is a this is a big machine. This is a this is a excavator, man. Mm-hmm. But you go see a 352 on a job site, you're like. Yeah, it's a 50 ton excavator. Yeah. Cool. Well, you took a picture in, um, what was the name of the valley? But did you were standing in just like a giant, 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 giant bucket. And it's yeah. like you're saying, if, if you're standing in it in a room, it's like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe how big it is. But if it's digging into the side of a mountain, you're like, yeah. 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 Just, That's yeah. It, 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 I don't know. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that was a PC 4000. We're next week going to see PC 8000. I'm excited for that one. <laughs> I'm excited for Sick. that one. Even even like the the 6015s though. Like we were at Jones Bros a couple weeks ago, and you see a 6015 working in like you know uh, a storm drain. Yeah, like a pond. Yeah. It's like oh yeah, there's an excavator over there. Yeah, it doesn't look nearly as massive as it does on like when just, you put it on a trailer. Y- yeah, roll the truck. You're like, yeah, oh, that's a big, that's a big machine. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. How do we fix this, Aaron? We have to make machines look bigger. I tried to do, I've, I've tried to do that since day one 
that's been the one of the challenges is how do I put th- this stuff into perspective for mm-hmm. someone that has no idea of what's going on? Mm-hmm. Well, the, when, you, when you would bring the truck in, I thought that was a really fascinating. The pickup truck to was a great tool. Yeah, mm-hmm. if we could travel with tool. a pickup truck everywhere for scale, that would be that would be huge. That was a, yes, yeah. You put a pickup truck next to something, a person next to something, and it also you have to take it from the right angle mm-hmm. because sometimes, <laughs> like even the seven ninety eight we're going to see next week. Um, I have a picture of, of it from two angles. Mm-hmm. There was a service truck in front of the machine. They were working on one of the tires. So they had the tire off. They were, I don't know what the hell they were doing, uh, but they had a, a full size finning service truck in front of the machine. And I took a, a picture of it facing the truck and you're like, that's cool. That, wow, that's a big truck. But then I took it from, uh, like think that's parallel. I went perpendicular 90 degrees. The truck looks way bigger from mm-hmm. that angle compared to the service truck than it does front facing. So it's all in a lot of times the angles as well. Or sometimes it's frustrating when something that's smaller is a little bit closer to me than the bigger thing, making the smaller thing look bigger than it really is. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Never park the service truck in front of the machine you're you're photographing. Because. Yeah. Yeah. Always put it just I do like to put the service truck if I'm gonna put park a truck and a service truck right next to each other, I like to park the service truck a little bit further back than the truck. Yeah. It's not lying, but it's making sure that you're making it look as big as possible or if i'm going to photograph somebody i want them as close to the, like the back of the truck as i can get them yeah because mm-hmm. it just looks cooler math geometry photography art physics ideas yeah these are what we talk about on the dirt talk podcast chemistry sometimes no yeah. i did not do well in chemistry straight c's baby no thanks all okay. right so we're gonna do um a podcast we've never really done before we've done versions of this me and aaron like as part of a bigger thing um, we kind of did one with you, Chase, a couple months ago, but this is like a recurring thing we're going to do I like it. Um, for these for these big dog trips. Um, okay, so but kind of what we'll do is I've got a couple questions. I'm essentially going to be off this episode, but I will kind of help shape kind of what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about y'all's recent trip to California that also ended up including Colorado. Mm. It wasn't just Colorado, Alex. It was Aspen. Yeah, it's bigger than Colorado. Much not in scale, much different, <laughs> not in scale, but financially, but financially, <laughs> yeah, and, and from a status standpoint, sure. Um, so just kind of an outline of what we'll, we'll, we'll touch on. Um, so to be stuff like what you saw, experience, I know you guys will touch on that as you go through. Um, maybe anything you like learned industry wise, Chase or and Aaron as well. Um, any surprises? There are plenty for this trip for sure. And then maybe something really particular that like stood out, like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe we got to do this. Um, so don't talk about Princess Diana and how we she, could. it was a hit job. We certainly could. JFK is another one. Did you see the, the stuff JFK that came out us. about that? Well, because it, like, it comes out like now, right? Like it's what, And they about. still won't release a lot of the documents. Yeah. Like why not? What documents? There's like statute. It, it wasn't a statute of limitations, but it was something about like the documents that went into the <laughs> research on JFK's assassination have to become public domain in 2022. Yeah. Oh, sick. Or maybe it's 2023 fun. in that because that's 60 years. Are they out? It's, uh, 60 years. Like some, now? Some of them came out, but they, they, they still wouldn't release But they're supposed to. But it was an inside job. Interesting. It was an inside job. Interesting. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Put some junk in there. Okay. Put some junk in there. I always, yeah. I always keep a little bit. Yeah. I like to waste people's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is a new format, and it is called the Build with Trip Report. Some kind of music would happen here. Yep. So this is basically going to be following any big trip we take, and all it is is a summary of the trip, what the heck we did, what we learned, what pickles we got ourselves in, and maybe some entertaining stories along the way. So this trip report, I'm joined by my co-host, Chase Lyons. Hello. With Alex in the Annex today. And Harrison on drums. I play bass. Drum, drum sound effect. <laughs> I play bass. <laughs> that was the first, first one that came to my head. Um, but this, this trip is about California. We just went to Southern California. And then we also went to Colorado. 
we'll get into that. So to start with this whole thing, January is a, a terrible month to look at dirt in the United States because it's either cold or wet just about everywhere, except for a few different markets, one being Southern California, the other being where I grew up, Arizona. You can work year round. So we had not really done much since November when we came off the last trip was Europe, mm -hmm. which was wild. And I always like to start the year with some kind of a bang because we need content. I just want to get on some damn job sites. We're ready to send it. Last year, we started the year with Saudi Arabia, which was, that's as big as Another it place that's dry typically. In the Another winter. place, dry, sunny, hot. It was great. So I figured let's go to Southern California and let's do a week down there and visit. Sunny SoCal. Sunny SoCal, no problems. We'll see all kinds of cool stuff. So I get this whole week set up. It's going to be awesome. And one, the first wrench that was thrown into the plan was Eric Jumper a month before was like, hey, I got us in to see the Snowcat work for X Games. And I said, that's awesome. But get written permission. I don't, we're not going until it's approved. And a lot of people reach out. They say, you should come out to my job site. All and I say, awesome. But until the guy or whoever is in charge approves us. Yeah. I'm not, I can't go out there because yeah. seeing your job says one thing, but going out there with a camera and doing what we do, different ball game. So I told Eric, go get written permission. Eric, a, a few days before we're supposed to go to California, gets the written permission. It's cool enough. Typically, we wouldn't do something on that last moment whim type scenario, but we said, all right, we're going to go to Colorado. Yeah. And if we're already out West, might as well just go there after California. Yeah. So we amend our plans to just leave California, go home and say, we're going to shoot snowcats over the weekend in Colorado. And while we're in Aspen, we'll go see Shay, um, Shay Stutzman and see what he does in, in the Aspen area as well. The cool thing was the nice thing was we could travel Saturday, shoot Saturday night, shoot Sunday because they work seven days a week building the course. That was very convenient. Mm -hmm. And that that's really the only reason why it was doable. Yeah. Like we did it. So the second wrench, we are about to go to California and we look at the weather. The weather absolutely sucks. California just got historic rainfall and snowfall mm -hmm. in the very first week of the year. So we get out there or we're going out there. It's already a mess, mm -hmm. a mud hole. Yeah, I've, like all the all the like sewers drainage is just like overflowing. Uh, streets are the whole are, place. Yeah, yeah whole just a mess. Is underwater emergency work everywhere. Two feet underwater in Santa Barbara. Yeah, like, I, just the whole state was just getting mollywopped. Yep, and then the weather for the week was complete shit. So I go into salvage mode. Monday's plan falls through. Tuesday's plan falls through, Wednesday's plan falls through, but I decide, ah, there's still enough out there. I think we'll get lucky. We can still send it. We go out there. We get in late Sunday night. We travel on Sunday to make, to, to give us the five days, work days during the week to film content. If I'm going to go that far, I try to travel on the weekends because I don't want to waste a day. Full days. Yeah. Yeah. And we start up in Victorville with Joshua grading. We were supposed to be over in Santa Barbara with Shade Farms and potentially Turf Construction, but or uh, Ventura, but Ventura was completely washed away. Mm -hmm. Terrible rain. So we started with Joshua grading, and they were doing some work on the railroad. A big derailment happened on a particular railroad in California. Which is it? I don't know. I don't know. But they, uh, it was it was about a two weeks before we got there. I think they said around Christmas. They had pulled the cars off the track. They had uh, rebuilt the track. Trains were going by. It was mainline. They needed to get it open. Double mainline. Now, when we got out there, they were doing the cleanup efforts. So they were pulling the cars out and dri dri driving them to a place where they could be scrapped. But they weren't moving the cars when we were there. We were there kind of to check out the job, take a few pictures, see what the heck was going on. The day was a wash anyway. We weren't in any kind of rush. Hung out with Joshua Grading, had a great time. But it wasn't super extensive that day. Yep. The second day is where Wait, stories come in. So we then stay in Whittier, 
uh, I've found that to be kind of the best place to stay in mm-hmm. LA because everywhere in LA is somewhat accessible from there and it's not super sketch. It, yeah. Contrary to what Angel says, it's totally fine. Every, like, yeah. I, I, I've never found it all that sketchy. Yeah. Me Where either. we stayed was great. I thought. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Granted, the first time we stayed, there were gunshots in the middle of the night, but we're in LA. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's like, LA. Who cares? I was fast asleep. Yeah. No problems there. Yeah. Uh, so in the morning, it's raining, but it was no problem because we were going to SA Recycling. They have a big recycling yard, Port of Long Beach. They bring cars and scrap metal in. They shred it with this monster shredder, one of the biggest in the country. If not, they could be the biggest in the country. Mm-hmm. They separate all the metal out. They so call you, it the meta, mega shredder. The mega shredder. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. They should have called it like Jaws or something like that. Yeah, it would have been cooler. sicker. But. but what this does is it just pulverizes the car. And then they sort the metal. So the steel will go over here. The aluminum will go over here. The copper will go over here. Everything else will separate. And then they'll load all the metal onto ships. So they either put everything through a shredder or they have this giant shear that will cut things up into, I think it's like eight or 12 inch pieces. Mm -hmm. All goes on ships and is shipped abroad for processing, recycling, and all of it, the steel, for example, ends up in new steel beams and potentially even new cars. Mm-hmm. So the funniest thing about that visit was they called it the automotive life cycle because they were scrapping cars on one side of the port. And on the other side of the port are where new cars come in from abroad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that place was fascinating. I really enjoyed my time walking around there and just seeing all these old dilapidated, like so many city buses, like so many, oh, yeah. so many like shipping trucks that are just like old and you never think about where they go when they die you just figure mm-hmm. they go rot somewhere but now they get caught up and recycled it's one of my favorite things about this job and it'll be a recurring thing in in this episode is seeing things you've never seen before thinking about what happens behind the scenes to all the stuff you just throw away and move on with your life with yeah that goes somewhere yeah you sell your old car where does it go yeah yeah that's it's my favorite thing about this job is just seeing all the things that you take for granted in action they, my favorite thing about it was the they had the big shears. Unfortunately, they weren't working. They right. were being worked on. But I asked him, so what's the main use for this? He's like, oh, well, we cut, cut buses apart and cut trash trucks apart. I'm like trash trucks. Seeing a trash truck get cut up with a giant like, pair of scissors. Yeah, there's a few there. I know. I yeah. so badly wish we saw that. But that was an awesome time. That was super cool. Awesome time. And. Oh, so they had they had a uh, that was my story from that that I thought was interesting. So they had this retaining wall. They were retaining scrapped metal um, with cars. So they stacked up a wall of cars to build a retaining wall to keep the trash from falling in. But it so was it's funny. Trash is valuable recyclables. Sorry, uh, valuable recyclables. Yeah. And what they would do, I noticed they were stacking the cars upside down and to flip the cars over for stacking, they had a stack of cars that they would drop a car onto <laughs> to flip it over. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were doing this over and over and stacking all these cars upside down. And I was, I was like, why would they, why would they need to flip the cars upside down to stack them if they're just stacking them? And it's to look for the catalytic converters because if they're in there, that's mm-hmm. a lot of money. It's coin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah some and the, metal. the fuel tanks. And the fuel tanks. Yeah. yeah. Make sure they weren't drained. So. Yeah. Um, so that was SA Recycling. Huge fan. They're, they're across the country now. Then we went to our friends at Quinn Cat. And we get to Quinn Cat, and I ask Brian, who is our tour guide, Brian, do you know anybody clearing snow? Because I think tomorrow might be a wash. I forget where we were supposed to be the second day, but or the third day. But the 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 job fell through. Oh, it was oh was the tunnel. It? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The tunneling project. Yes, but I feel like, or maybe that was Wednesday. I think it was pre. I think it was preemptive. Hey, we might need to go have a backup plan. Yeah. So I asked Brian, do you know anybody clearing snow? He's like, as a matter of fact, I just talked to somebody. So he gets somebody on the phone, uh, one of their other sales reps from more of the Mammoth area. Hey, do you, do you know anybody? Oh yeah, these guys would be great. I'll send you the contact information. Check. Then we go into the shop. We check out the shop. Quinn Cat's shop, by far one of the coolest cat shops. Super cool. City of industry location. One of the coolest cat shops I've been in. Yeah. Second time going and just as impressive as the first time. But buying. every single bay is chock full, which isn't totally unusual. But what's unusual is there's so many different weird projects in there mm-hmm. at all times. Mm-hmm. So they had a, a tractor getting split apart over here. They had a, a fire 
D6 cat over here getting worked on. They had one of SA Recycling's machine where they yeah. were taking two machines and rebuilding it into one machine. Mm-hmm. There's trash machines. The military dozer, 40 years old with 57 hours on it. Like, yeah. 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 On its like third rebuild or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they have they have a, just an amazing assortment of machines getting worked on. Repowers, full rebuilds. It's amazing what they do there. There was a fire E8 <laughs> getting a second cab on it, which was pretty neat. That was cool. A crest, uh, two-person cab on, yeah. a, on a D8 dozer. Swamper. They had a, a 20,000 gallon water tank that was just re, rebuilt and painted, all kinds of fun stuff. Mm-hmm. So we had some fun there. And then I get back to the Airbnb and get a call from our host for the next morning at the tunnel, basically saying, hey, not good. You guys are going to have to come back. I said, shit. And we call the snow guy. Hey, what's going on? Would we be able to see some snow clearing tomorrow? He's like, yeah, man, come on up. So we say, how far is Mammoth from <laughs> Whittier? Yeah. <laughs> five hours, five and a half hours, whatever it was. Great. Let's just send it. We have nothing better to yeah, do. Yeah, sounds tomorrow. like a day trip to me. Yeah, in my head it is. Because anyway. mm-hmm. I used to do day trips all the time. Like I would drive six hours to California, shoot, drive six hours home. Yeah. Pretty regular. Yeah. We wake up the next morning at like 3.30. Mm-hmm. We're driving by four. We go all the way up to Bishop. We get some coffee, have a snack, and then we're going to head up to Mammoth. And Mammoth, the night before, the day before, just got pounded Mm -hmm. with snow, obliterated with snow. More snow than they've had in a very long time. Yeah. And then what was amazing was a few days after we were there, they got just as much snow Mm -hmm. again. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It was 90 (laughs) inches of snowfall over the course of two days. It's crazy. Insane. And I've never covered snow, uh, snow clearing. Because you have to be there and you can't get there. You can't travel there yeah. when snow clearing is happening. Yeah, yeah it so, doesn't work. Yeah. So I can't fly into the East Coast when there's a big storm because I'm not, I, I, my flights are probably going to be delayed or the roads aren't going to, but whatever right. it is, it's just too risky. And even if, even if you can get there, you still need a loader to pull your two wheel drive armada the rest of the way up. They're actually clearing. Well, so we don't, we, we get to out of Bishop and the road's closed. Caltrans had closed the road for the sake of clearing. <laughs> so we go, we're driving by all the, there's a line of cars all the way down the highway pulled Ski off the bums. side. Ski just bums. Ready to hit the powder. Yeah. Just ready to go. Yeah. And basically like everybody was in a Subaru or a van mm-hmm. and everybody was ready to go. And we get up to the first guy and say, hey, and I'm wearing my vest. Hey, we're, we're going up to clear snow. He's like, all right, we'll talk, talk to this guy because they've been probably getting people asking him all the morning. We go up to the next guy. Hey, we're, we're, we're going to clear snow. All right. You're going to have to talk to him. So we go, we go to the next guy. We're in a Nissan Armada. <laughs> we're in a Nissan Armada with Florida plates. Yeah. And four dudes. <laughs> and four dudes. Yeah. One of them's in a high-vis yeah. vest. Well, one the of other ones a, are just yeah, in civvies. You like, guys left me out to dry on that one. Because yeah. if we all had vests on, yeah, it would have been legit. Yeah. We get up to the boss man with Caltrans and I tell him we're going to plus snow. And he says, uh, really? Oh. I don't see any shovels in there. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 we're, we're doing it with equipment. Huh. And he, and he looks in the back window and he's looking for snowboards. Yeah, he or has skis. angel, he has angel roll his window down so he can look <laughs> into the back of the truck to see if we have any snowboards or skis and we're trying to skip the line, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and he, and he finally, he's just like, all right, go ahead, but take it easy. And I'm, as we're driving away, we're like, oh, fuck. Is he going to see the Florida plates? <laughs> yeah. Just watching in the rear view. Yeah. yeah. But we get up, we go up the mountain and it's closed. So we can kind of mosey on up, no traffic, which was awesome Yeah, because the traffic coming back, going up the hill was wild. Mm -hmm. It was, the whole place was chock full. It was kind of sketchy going up because we did not have four wheel drive, but Eric did buy two tire chains at the local auto supply store in Bishop because we were required to have tire chains. They didn't even look though. We didn't actually need those chains. And also a quick, quick letter to Nissan. Snowmo doesn't do anything. I was impressed with what I was in. Impre- I didn't slip once until we got, we were like driving in snow and then we were, and then we were screwed. Yeah. On the clear road though, cleared road, like my truck in two wheel drive going up that I would have, I would have been really? fish the whole way. So, so you're the whole snow mode. 
No, I, I, I don't know if snow mode does anything. I think it's just, I, I think all snow mode is, is the button lights up saying ne- next to snow. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. This, all right. I'm this, ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Winner. Fuck you. Two wheels coming at you. Uh, but it was a very two wheel drive car. Our fleet mechanic, Eric Jumper, checked the night prior in a grocery store parking lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we get up there. We almost immediately get stuck meeting Ben with Plow Brothers. We get up there. He says, all right, follow me. He's in a deer loader. We start. He just takes off. I lose. I lose the loader. Yeah. Almost yeah. Immediately. He's like, yeah, just follow me. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm like, uh, oh. Fuck. Okay. So I try to do my best. He calls me. He's like, where'd you go? I find him again. We go up into this neighborhood. We're going up this hill. Car gets stuck immediately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> immediately. Yeah. But I'm not that, all that worried about it because typically getting a car buried in snow, that's a fucking problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that's a slight inconvenience in your morning. Right. <laughs> you're like, ah, shit. What do I do? Yeah. But we had a loader right when in front of us. When the car you're following is a loader. it's When you're following a loader. Yeah. yeah. It, it was a three minute delay. Mm-hmm. We just grabbed onto the front we had a little hook shout out to nissan for at least putting that on their vehicles yeah, thank you because we've had we've gotten cars stuck before that don't have that big facts and the uh, the bouncy rope just pulled us right up the hill mm-hmm. and we went into the neighborhood mm-hmm. so we get to the snow clearing they have a skid steer rented by quinn and a deer loader with a sweet high lift bucket on it mm-hmm. which i thought was pretty that bad. was cool yeah you don't see those very often and he's just like all right like we're gonna be working here do your thing. So we just do our thing. But everything is buried in snow. I've never seen that much snow before. Me either. There was four feet of snow on top of the porta potties. Mm-hmm. Like was it was nuts. And yeah, good luck was... getting into them because you had to walk through four feet of snow yeah. to even open the door. You couldn't to... get into it. Yeah, you couldn't. You like... could only get into there was a row of them. You could only get into one because they dug it out. Mm-hmm. But the other ones, you couldn't even open the door. There's right. so much snow. Um, so we checked that out, or at least I checked the loader out. Angel and I did some work while you and our fleet mechanic decided to go put chains on the car and I get done. They're snow blowing, which I thought was awesome. They're moving snow. I get some shots, go back to the car. We're going to go to the next site. I come back to the car and you guys are fiddle fucking around with the back tires. You had just got one snow chain. This is 45 minutes Tire after we on. started trying to put the chains on. Yeah. And the other one is half on, but not really on. <laughs> not on. Not on. So we ultimately decided to just go with one because it was too, too challenging. I don't know if we got the wrong size or what. According to the box, we got the right size. We watched the video on their website. We read the instructions. We could not do it. Like It took everything in us to get the one on. Eric Jumper is also from Pennsylvania. Yeah. I'm from Arizona. I've never put tire chains on. Me either. I'm from... I, 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 I couldn't even change the oil on the Armada. Sure. I'm, I'm an idiot. Sure. But I had more faith in Eric. Yeah, don't do that ever. <laughs> Roll of thumb. Yeah. Yeah. So for the sake of time, we say, all right, we're just going to keep one chain on one on the rear right tire, I think it was. The and rear it left. It totally helped. Yeah. Sure, it helped. Yeah. In addition um, to snow mode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to chalk it up snow mode. Yeah. We go to the next site. Uh, he's plowing with another guy with a, a blade on a loader. Awesome. Very Again, cool. just everything's buried. We go to the third site and it's a house that is buried to the roof, to the mm-hmm. first floor. So the guys, they go put a bunch of guys on the roof with shovels to go get the snow off the, off the roof. They just, they didn't need a ladder. They just walked onto the roof yeah. because the snow was so deep. Yeah. The, the people couldn't get out of their house. Yeah, that was wild. Mm-hmm. And saw that. And then said, later dudes, and sent it home. But this time it was only about four, four and a half hours home because we were staying in Palmdale Mm -hmm. in the desert above LA. A day before that, we were supposed to go to the gold mine. I get a message from the gold mine saying, hey, it's a a mess here. (laughs) I don't think it's worth you guys coming out. And I say, well, we're we're here, so might as well try it. We get to the gold mine first thing Thursday. It's, this is a really amazing mine that i love visiting because it's golden queen soledad up in mojave california and usually a mine is a hole in the ground so all you can see is the hole in the ground whereas this is on a mountain and they're mining from the top down essentially and they're mining this mountain has historically since the 1800s been mined traditionally with tunnels and now they're open pit mining with large shovels and trucks yeah 
we get there. We go through our safety orientation. And he says, Nate, who we're visiting, he says, hey, by the way, both shovels are down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, fuck. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. we're, we're here. We go up. We follow him up. We go to the first location. One of the shovels being worked on. They're, both the shovels are being worked on. So it's, it's being figured out, both of them. Uh, they had a loader, a big Komatsu, I think WA900, loading mm-hmm. the trucks. And it was actually getting those trucks out pretty quick. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, the cycle times were super quick yeah. on on all the machines there. Yeah, yeah, so it's a it's a. They uh, were flowing even with two shovels down, which was impressive. Sure. And the crusher was down for scheduled maintenance anyway, mm-hmm. so I don't think it was a big deal for them. But yeah. for our the sake of our pictures, not <laughs> not the best. So we do the best there, and then we go up top. We basically just destroy the car along the way with mud. Oh yeah, just get it all caked mm-hmm. in mud. And I know we're gonna have to wash it at some point. Because we've returned dirty rental cars before, and they charge hefty cleaning fees. Hefty. Like $500. Mm-hmm. We go up to the top. The top is amazing because you can see the desert all around you. There's a big wind farm over here, big solar farm over here. I love the the irony of that as well because without the mining here, the wind farm and the solar farm wouldn't exist. And the 3000 up top was getting its bucket changed out because there was a structural failure in the bucket, which happens. You look at this big steel bucket and you're like, how could that ever fail? Mm-hmm. It happens all the time yeah. when you're slamming into rock almost 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we see that process, which I thought was fascinating. So fascinating. They have to, it's a face shovel. So it's a two piece bucket. They have to weld a brace into the front part of the bucket, kind of the clamshell part, so that when they unpin it, it doesn't fold in on itself, which is, I thought, was interesting. Super fascinating. Then they weld a bracket onto the pin instead of just whacking the pin with a hammer from the inside. Which they tried. Well, they had to loosen it up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But they weld a bracket onto the side of the pin temporarily and then just yank it out with the loader. The first pin, like that, just... Right out. Super satisfying. Super satisfying. Second pin, it was in there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because now you have all of this this weight on that one pin. Yeah, you have the torsion of the other pin being out, pinching it into place, in addition to the weight of the actual bucket itself all resting on that pin. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just frozen in there. Mm -hmm. And they were yanking on it, yanking on it. And for the sake of time, we just said, we're going to get out of here. We go back down the hill. And then we drive through the desert over back to Joshua, where we were on Monday, to go see the railroad cleanup again. We didn't think we were going to go see it because we were supposed to see it the day before on Wednesday. But Matt called me and said, hey, we had to send the side booms to another derailment Mm -hmm. in Sacramento or Fresno. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck. Well, if they're all the way up there, we're not going to see this stuff. Yeah. But the side booms make it back. And they said, we're good for Thursday. So on Thursday, we go out there. And the task was to remove these rail cars from this farmer's field and move them all the way around to this laydown yard where they could get cut up by SA Recycling, funny enough, put into bins and all the way for scrap. They were aluminum cars holding, uh, carrying iron ore from Utah. So the process was they bring the side boom in and they had bought these old side booms pipe layers. And they have, uh, well, they come in with an excavator and kind of manhandle the car a little bit and, and, and set the car up in a way where they can access the, the front of the car. Yeah. The, kind of the coupler area. Then they come in with the winch and the side boom, hook on to the car, and essentially just, I mean, run the cable out. And then the power of the winch just pulls the car, drags it along the earth to damn near where the tracks are and where the, the access road is. Yeah. The active railway that's like constant trains coming by every Non-st- 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah, like, it's it's pretty gnarly mm-hmm. through there. Fully yeah. loaded freight trains going in and out of basically the port of LA. And these machines are working. I think they said they're allowed to get within four feet of the railroad like five, or something. Five feet. Five feet. Yeah, which it's so terrifying. scary. So, so they pull the car out and then they put a 988, an old 988B on one side. I think it was a 980 on the other side. Mm-hmm. They both in tandem lift the car up and then 
the 988 reverses while the 980 drives forward mm -hmm. and they drive the car all the way down the access road to the laydown yard where everything would be cut up. Yeah. And then once they had moved all the cars, they were going to remediate all the soil because it was this iron yeah, that had spilled out everywhere. Iron everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that had spilled out everywhere. And that was that project. Yeah. From there, we then dropped Angel off at his house to get his car mm -hmm. and w went south to Temecula. Here we go. <sighs> yeah. Temecula, Temecula was like, to me, that day kind of felt like what I've been working towards being a part of since I was five. Like, I see, I see I've never been involved in that world. Mm -hmm. I've never been involved in Supercross, Motocross, whatever that all is. I've never been involved in X Games. I've yeah. never been involved in any of that. So I don't appreciate the coolness factor Yeah, in a lot of ways. Yeah. I do appreciate the coolness. Sure. But to me, it's like, I we're just, yeah, just hanging out with Jared. Yeah, and to me, it's like, seeing seeing that in person and being able to film it like i've been filming professionally for like seven years now but i've idolized action sports since i was five or six years old and so growing up you know x games were everything you'd, you'd stop the presses to run and watch the x games in the living room mm -hmm. and so having seen you know jared competing like all my life and then to be at his house filming it's just weird how life works and puts you in the places, it's, you know, everyone just says, just work hard yeah. and you'll get there. Yeah. It's so true. Just not in the ways that you think you're going to get there. And that was one of those days. But we were there to film how he builds his dirt jumps. Well, hold on. Hold on. We'll hold. We're not there yet. Okay. We had to go learn about fire first. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Cal Fire that morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was sick. I'm, I, I'm trying to move quick for the sake of timing on the podcast. We just did so much. I can't move quickly through all this. Yeah, it, it, it's a ton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, did, we did like at least 15 minutes. That was not this. So we're no, okay. no, we're like but I'm fine. I'm fine making this a two hour episode. If it needs yeah. to be a two. Like, I don't have a we're problem good. making a long episode. We're good. I, I, I mean, that's up to you guys. I have no meetings. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I have a meeting at noon. <laughs> but so we go up to Calfar, the rainbow camp. And I got in touch with them through I'd been out on their their training. Uh their little training mission twice before you came with me one and we made a youtube video about incredible. it incredible yeah so incredible. It's, it's on our youtube channel if you want to check out cal fire yeah and all of everything we're about to talk about will be on social media and youtube yeah everything if it's not already so i, I connect with these guys and when whenever i'm out it's it's at the marine base camp pendleton and they're 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 their train and work i don't like to get in the way i'm just a visitor I like to be a fly on the wall. Yeah. If and they're, I'm, they're literally training on life and death. They're, so you they're training can't on life go and death. pull them out of a dozer because yeah. they only have so much time to work with it because yeah. they're not contractors that do this full time. Correct. When there's a fire, they go. And it's not like I kind of weaseled my way, way in both times. They're super cool. Mm -hmm. But it's not like Cal Fire requested us to be there. It was totally just low key. Come on out. Check it out. It's sweet. Take some pictures. Do whatever you want. Yeah. But we're here to work. So you, you see these machines. And it's so specialized and amazing, and yet you can't really ask questions and get a lot of these answers uh, to these questions that are in your head. So I was so stoked to spend time with two fire dozer operators who didn't have you know, this urgent task to go achieve that we could just talk to in the morning. So we get up to the, the camp, and it's Zach and Bubba, or the two operators, they pull the truck out, they, they pull the dozer and truck out for us. And we sit there for two hours and just ask them every single question just unload, imaginable. Bombard them with questions. Everything. Yeah. So why is this this way? Why is this this way? How do you do this? How do you do that? I learned so much about fire dozers, about cow fire, about all of it. And it was awesome. I yeah. felt like a little kid. And then in the background, there's like, a siren will go off every once in a while or yeah. like something will go on the intercom yeah. about some fire or guys will be getting ready to go out in their their crew vehicle. You're like, this is so cool. I feel like a little six-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little community <laughs> of these heroes that yeah, are just yeah. like, and you're in there watching them like, yeah, do their thing. Yeah. It feels really exclusive. Yeah, I, I, I felt like a little six-year-old because all these guys are like, yeah, they all have mustaches. And every one of them. <laughs> every yeah. single one yeah. of them. Yeah. I felt, I felt it was cool. It yeah. was cool. But the fire cat was amazing. It has its own transport. Uh, the, the machine is tailored to the task. 
And then it has its own, essentially a service truck, a tender with it as well. All of that will be on YouTube. So we didn't capture the machine working in a fire, but this was better in a lot of ways because we got to just learn about the machine itself. Yeah, we'll title the video something like a walk around of a fire cat and yeah. just hang out with that piece of equipment and kind of go in depth on it, which that, that was awesome. a lot of people ask for more in depth stuff. So this will be a good one. Sure. And hopefully we get out on fire later this year. Yeah, man, so badly I want to. That's another thing of like we just have to be there coincidentally when it happens. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, it's hard. Logistic to, issues there, but hard to time. it's going to be sick. It'll um, happen one day. So then we go to Jared's, the McNeil farm. Mm-hmm. He lives there. And the main feature of the farm is essentially this gigantic track that he's built himself out of SoCal dirt. Which is beautiful dirt. Beautiful dirt. Fantastic. And he has a mini excavator. I think it's a 308. He needs a new one. Caterpillar. He has a steel wrist. He has some Rockland buckets equipment. And then he has a 259 skid steer that he just wrapped himself, actually. Mm-hmm. Looked great. And so we got, uh, we, we showed up there and Ryan from Rock Structures was there. Dude, Ryan running in, getting out of the car at the stranger's house and the first thing you see is your friend yeah, is well, so weird. He was the last person I was, I was like, yeah. Why the fuck are you here? Yeah. Why are you here? Wait, you didn't know he was going to be there. No. No. no we just showed I, up. I messaged Chase was like, dude, Ryan's the best. How cool. I didn't know that it wasn't like part of the plan no. to see him. There. No. He was just there going trail riding with Jared <laughs> that day, coincidentally. Yeah. Yeah. So right. weird. Well, I feel I feel like uh, I think his family was out of town. The weather was shit. So he's like, I'm just going to drive South Carolina or uh, Southern California and send it. So we get Jared doing a session and he goes hard, dude, when he does a session. I like it really puts into perspective. That's him practicing and playing around for our silly YouTube channel. Yes. To think about the danger and the risk of what he's doing when he's actually competing and performing. Mind boggling. Yeah. Mind boggling. But it's cool how close you can get at his place. You can be right there. Yeah. Yeah. You can touch the tire while he's in the air. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's awesome. Yeah. So that was fun. We got to see him running the excavator a little bit, running the skid steer a little bit. And then the best part of the event. I can't disagree with this. Yeah. Was he's put a bunch of dirt into a shipping container and he has this whole lighting set up and trommel and this uh, like he's built a little world inside of the shipping container for his steel metal rc construction equipment so he brought all his equipment out he has a 374 uh skid steer uh a haul truck Mm -hmm. a few haul trucks a few haul trucks he had all kinds of cool stuff another excavator yeah and we got to sit in there and his his kid (laughs) was in there and we got to dig with these things i could have been in there the entire day and boy can they dig like, they can really move the the weight of these models too they're like 50 pounds yeah. they are so heavy it yeah. takes two person two people to load the excavator into the room like yeah. jared and eric had to like tag team it to get it in sure it, they are beefy and their their ability to like actually work with their scale mm-hmm. impressive that was so amazing. impressive that i've was never amazing. seen those working and i've seen them on shelves but like the plastic one we have out here, you're like, oh, this is cool. But, uh. These were legit. These were super legit. Yeah. The most fascinating thing about them was that the lines actually had caterpillar uh, uh, hydraulic fluid, hydraulic fluid yeah. running through them. Yeah. And we were like, what are you putting these? He's like, yeah, just regular cat hydraulic fluid. <laughs> what else are you putting in them? <laughs> I don't know. Sure. I don't know. That's yeah. fascinating. Yeah, they legitimate 40? hydraulics. Yeah. And they had little fans to keep it cool and yeah. all kinds of crazy stuff. So that was a good time. Yeah. We were in there um, for so long. We were in there for like an hour. I think, and I think Ryan was a little annoyed because he went down there to ride trails yeah. and the weather was beautiful, dirt's beautiful. And, and we're, Jared's geeking out yeah, with us yeah. on his toys. We're, like, in, we're in a little shipping container yeah. fucking off. And that's the thing is like so many people were there to ride with Jared and he was stoked on the dirt stuff <laughs> more than riding with his friends. Yeah. Like he was in there playing with us and Ryan had to come tell him like, hey, the guys and us, oh, yeah. we're it waiting was, on it you. It was like, a big group. Was dude, there, there was, was like 15 like guys. 15 dudes waiting to ride <laughs> and Jared just prioritized us. So dope. <laughs> Thanks, Jared, for having us out. You're not going to hear hey, this, but thank you. But in fairness, I scheduled that visit beforehand. Yeah, these guys just showed up. So Ryan, up. Ryan can get the hell out of yeah, here. Yeah, Ryan, find yeah. a vest with a bunch of pockets yeah. and take a hike. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, get yourself a bus ticket and get the hell out of yeah. town. Um, that was California. 
So we then stay in Temecula, drive to San Diego early in the morning, Mm -hmm. get on a plane, fly to Denver, drive to Aspen, get there in early evening, Mm -hmm. go to Whole Foods, get some snacks, snacks, and go right to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Straight to buttermilk. Straight to buttermilk. We go up on the hill and Landon, Mm -hmm. Eric calls Landon, comes up in the snowcat. And that is just one of my favorite things in the world is, is a snowcat coming up to you. You're like, I feel, I feel str- like that makes me feel like a child because I used to watch snowcats when I was a kid. Yeah. I would go skiing and tell you right every year. I would be fucking glued to the window yeah. watching these snowcats just absolutely floored by what the heck these things did. So it comes up and he's like, hop in. The snowcat is a two passenger machine, which is cool. But he was in one seat and there were three of us. <laughs> so, yeah. so so the three of us pile into this damn thing. Yeah. One on the center console, yeah. someone's in a chair, and then I think Aaron's just like pressed up against the windshield, like yeah, riding yeah. up the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, it's a, and it's a little rough and you're going up pretty yeah. steep terrain. Yeah, super steep. And at this point it's dark and he gives us kind of the lay of the land. He gives us a little tour. And he says, Where where do you want to go? And we basically just start at the top of the course. And work our way down. And so there was a snow cat working at the top. And then you'd go down to the next feature. There was a cat there. You go to the next feature. There were two cats there. Yeah. The the whole experience was incredible. Yeah. And after working in the dirt for so long, you're used to seeing what a dozer can push in proportion to its blade size. Mm -hmm. And you get there and you just see them pushing these heaping piles everywhere they go yeah they're they're moving snow no matter what if they're just tracking along or whatever they're doing they're pushing so much volume of snow all the time and it's a part of keeping it fresh so that the next guy whenever he comes can you know pass smoothly but well and apparently with snow the more you work it the shittier it gets Mm -hmm. so with dirt you can work it work it work it snow you can only work it so much so it's all a game of managing the snow that they have up mm-hmm. there. They have to know how deep the snow is. They don't want to get into the dirt, for example, but they have to go build these enormous features. Massive. I had no idea how big they were. Massive. Huge. Yeah. TV does not do Winter X Games. No. Any justice. No. I was talking to someone this morning. Like You get up on top of the deck on the super pipe, you look over the edge, you're like, Huh. I don't think any of us got within two feet of the edge of the super pipe. I was not getting close. And even even on the deck, like you're walking down at the top of the half pipe and we were just walking down to shoot pictures. It's so sketchy to walk down the deck of yes. the half pipe. It is so steep. Well, but in fairness, too, we were just wearing normal boots without the greatest traction. But regardless, how steep the it was pipe itself steep. is. Yeah. They said it's almost 20%. It doesn't convey on TV. On TV, it looks like almost flat. Yes. Like... It was, fasc- it was fascinating to me. And then the scale of um, Big Air. Yeah. Dude. Yes. Those guys. And how the landing, like they land and they have to stop. Like, do they have to get like their they're... pilot's license before X Games? Because they're going up in elevation when they hit that jump. Mm-hmm. They're going to the moon and then falling some 60 feet yeah. before they're back on snow. Yeah. I think we were there at the perfect time because they had built a lot of the main features. Yeah. Yeah. And it was more so shaping and, and dialing everything in at this point. But what was so amazing to me was they don't use GPS or anything. Mm-hmm. It's, they have a design. They run a string line. Yeah. And they'll use these inclinometers mm-hmm. to, to determine the percentage of slopes and this and that. But other than that, it's straight up art. Yeah. And half of it's done at night. And it makes sense too. Like these, these, this group of eight guys are the same eight guys likely that have been doing it for years for x games for do tour yes for like a lot of the motocross events like they understand ramps they understand snow well, that's all the company does it's yeah. snow park technology right right is the company that had us out snow park technologies and that's all they do mm-hmm. yeah it's just it was so so fascinating to see the fact that they were doing it by eye yes so we photograph and i take thousands of pictures that night photographing at night's too hard too because mm-hmm. your shutter has to be fast but with a fast shutter you're not letting much light in it's dark snowcats though have amazing lighting packages yeah beautiful led lighting then we wake up in the morning have breakfast go back to the mountain shoot them in the morning mm-hmm. i go catch up on some work because it's sunday at this point yep. and 
when I'm traveling, I'm ignoring essentially my day job. I have to go catch up. Then we go back in the evening and shoot in the evening. Mm -hmm. Everything about it was amazing. You have Aspen down below you on one side, the airport down below you on the other side with monster jets taking off the whole day. I was amazing how much traffic was going out of that airport. Mm -hmm. All the planes are taking off below you like you're above them as they're taking off, which is kind of interesting to see. Planes taking off from above. Yeah. And tons of cats up on the hill just making shit happen. They had this cat. They had the winch cat. They had the cat cutting the pipe. The variety was amazing. Mm -hmm. So that was that. Thanks to Snowpark Technologies because that was... Thank you, Snowpark Technologies. That was wild. Oh, and my God. All the guys were so cool. Dude, every one of them. So cool. Every one of them. So that, that, which makes the experience even better. Mm-hmm. I love being with just good, yeah. wholesome people. How many times did people pull over and was like, hey, man, I mean this genuinely. Tell me if you ever need anything. If you need me to pose the yeah, machine, if you yeah. need, please ask, please. It, like, it's like begging you to inconvenience them. The one, like, the, the only bad experience I had was the snowmobile guy. I tried to, oh, I mean, yeah, he get a lift up top. Yeah, he wasn't one like, of theirs. He's like, hop on. He fucking ripped. Yeah. I was terrified. Would you not? <laughs> I, of course I would. Yeah, would of course not? I would. But yeah. he's got the handlebars and he's standing up. So you got the, you just have much more balance on that thing. Right. Well, I'm on the back yeah. with a backpack, my camera, my lenses and yeah. shit in my vest. Yeah, I don't want to lose. to ask going 60 miles up a hill. Yeah. I am scared shit. I don't even know this guy's name. Yeah. Like, I'm just holding on for dear life at this point. Yeah. So that was that was snow. Monday morning comes around and we go hang out with Shay at Stutzman Gerbe's. They've been around since 1960. Facts. And they do excavation work and demolition work in Aspen, which mm-hmm. is a ridiculous market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we went and saw a residential basement expansion project where they were moving some dirt. They had a 325 and a track loader. The equipment that Stutzman runs, unbelievable. I love that you said they have a 325 and... <laughs> no, it's it's not just a 325. Yeah. It's a 325 with 3D GPS, with auto grease, with a axis tilt, tilt rotator, rotator with VA. no cylinders. No cylinders. No right? cylinders. A uh, oil boom. quick. VA boom. Yeah. A, a additional lighting package. Mm-hmm. All kinds of attachments. It has oil quick below the, the the tilt rotator and above the tilt rotator. An unbelievable machine. Very, very rare in the United States, but very common in Europe. And they have two of them. <laughs> and they have two of them. And a 315 and a 335. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I love what Shea has done because he's gone to Europe. He's seen how the Europeans do it, and he's implemented that in the States. I think it's brilliant. We got to have more of that. Well, I don't know if we will anytime soon, but- yeah. Shay's at least leading the way. Yeah, thanks, Shay. So then we left Aspen and we went up to a house that I guess was bought for $10 million. A beautiful house. Huge. Stunning house. Yes. Uh, not that old. And it was like being 15 years. demolished. The entire thing, except for one feature. Mm-hmm. And that was the concrete block fireplace in the middle of the house. Here's why. Uh, you can no longer in the county... Um, Let's call it Aspen County. It's not, but let's it's call not, it Aspen yeah. County. I think it might be Eagle County. No, Eagle's down the mountain. No. Um, so you are no longer allowed that to have wood. It might be Eagle County, though. I could be completely wrong. I'm going to look it up after. Yeah. Anyway. So you're no longer allowed to have wood-burning fireplaces in Aspen or in the county. Um, so what they have decided to do to get grandfathered in is to build their dream house around an existing chimney, <laughs> which means you have to demolish the house that's around a currently standing wood-burning chimney to build your dream house. Yeah. Aspen is a different world. So they're, they were spending uh, six figures to just have the ability to burn wood in their house one day. And the construction budget was... High eight figures. High eight figures. So, yes, big time. Uh, I've never seen a 336 on a eight figure house before. No, and that was very cool uh, that they were, they instead of having like a high reach for that project, they were ripping the house apart and then just pulling right up onto the rubble to get the rest of the house. 
yeah. torn down. Yeah, was, I'm, was, that might be standard it. practice, but I hadn't seen it. It's Oregon. standard. What's not standard is the oil quick and the sorting grapple. Mm. Most demolition contractors in the United States use a bucket and a thumb, which now, seeing how other people do it, is stupid. Yeah, very dumb. Uh, the grapple's so effective. It, it, it's so much more effective. Yeah. It's not even funny how much how much superior it is. And they're like, yeah, we would never use a bucket and a thumb yeah, anymore it's after like, using this. After, after seeing Chris... Uh, Let's dig 18 in the woods using his thumb to move trees around. It's like, oh, that would be so ineffective yes. for this. Well, for what he does, it makes sense. For what that's for what demolition. Saying. It's great in the woods. Mm-hmm. For this, why would you want that when you can fit so much more capacity and like have more power? Well, and, and you can the ability uh, to rotate and it's the rotating and the sorting. Yeah. So they're they're able to sort so much more effectively with it. It's just it's a lot more delicate. You can you can do more exact work with it. Yeah. Um, so that was that. Then we went back to the mountain or went back to Denver, sat in two hours of traffic and flew home, got back at midnight. So that's what that, happened last week. <laughs> what? I said, so that's what happened last week. So that's what happened last week. <laughs> yeah. So that was the very first Bill with Trip Report. I have no idea if people like hearing that stuff, but that's what happened last week. Uh, you can see all of that at youtube.com slash Aaron Witt. On YouTube. Go to my YouTube. Check it out. And also, um, we have a new store live, buildwit.com slash store. If you go there, we have two new shirts, a hat, and a sticker sheet. We have more coming on the way. The more you buy, the more we can go create. All of that money is being rolled back into the store. We have some cool shit coming. If you like listening to this, check it out, buildwit.com slash store. Check out our YouTube at Aaron Witt, YouTube slash Aaron Witt. Mm-hmm. Com slash New Aaron videos Witt. every Tuesday. New videos every Tuesday. And if you can, if you like this episode, please share it. We would love you to share it. I'll see you in the next one. Stay dirty, everybody. Stay dirty.